Hey folks, welcome back to the vlog. I don't know if I'm starting a new vlog or if this is a continuation of another vlog, don't know. I haven't posted in a while because things have been a little bit manic and my boo is sick. His health kind of takes precedence over editing a video. He is not doing all that well, which kind of sucks because I don't like seeing my boo in this way. It's not the first time that I have seen him sick because right after we kind of made our relationship official and everything in 2020, he had COVID and I was taking care of him. <sighs> Trying to take care of him as best as I can. We have a doctor that's coming to the house. So I'm currently in the kitchen because, sorry, the light's gonna be changing, whatever, I'm moving all over the place. I'm going to be making some chicken soup for my room. As you can imagine, he hasn't been able to keep anything down. And I've been trying like little, you know, kind of homeopathic, natural, holistic methods to kind of help him keep food down. So like I've been giving him lemons to suck on. I wanted to give him a ginger shot because ginger like always settles the stomach because he's been having some really bad nausea, but things just haven't been able to stay down. Like even water has not really been helping much. I mean, it's been helping to keep him like hydrated in the moment, but I feel like he would need something more along the lines of like Pedialyte or Gatorade or something like that. I might go out to the shops and get that at some point, but I'm going to make him some chicken soup. Very, very soon. I'm not even gonna be going crazy overboard with the seasonings and everything too because I'm not trying to make a gourmet meal. And he's going to be feeling, for lack of a better word, really shitty <laughs> for the next like two days probably, two or three days. So let me get this chicken and whatnot going on. I think I'm just gonna put it in the pressure cooker so that I can go upstairs and check on him because I actually put a timer on so that I can go check on him like every 15, 20 minutes. just left um gave me a bunch of meds to give to my boo if you hear barking you can see the back the scullery door is open mr Cretus will hear me talking and feel left out and he's kind of being a nuisance right now so i need him to like get that energy out so good news my boo boo is feeling better after the doctor was here he gave him like a bunch of meds which is good like antibiotics anti-inflammatory anti painkiller electrolytes like all sorts of stuff so he should be he should be okay now but he did say he's feeling better he's been able to get out of bed soup going as you can see here probably doesn't look like much because it's literally just chicken carrots some garlic oh hey guys i want to tell you guys about victoria so i told you that i needed to go to sars to see if they would give me leniency so that i wouldn't be responsible for the duty tax right on our shipment i was advised to take all of my paperwork all of my evidence my affidavit my forms all of that to the sars in pretoria last time we were in pretoria was when we picked up kratos and that was almost a year ago <laughs> okay you know pretoria is not very close <laughs> for me because i'd never been like down in that area of pretoria it felt like i was in the cbd now, I have no problems being in an inner city because inner cities a lot of times, regardless of where you go in the world, a lot of times are kind of dirty. There's a whole lot of people just going in and out of the streets, in and between the cars and all that kind of stuff, right? Like that stuff, I mean, you have to be vigilant, right? Like it's not just in Joburg or Pretoria or wherever, but like you, you need to be vigilant everywhere when there's a lot of people because it's very easy to for things to happen. So 
I'm driving through, right? One thing about me, guys, is I hate standing out. Like, I just don't like calling attention to myself. I feel like I've kind of always been that way. I don't know. As I get older, I kind of like want to just shrink it to the shadows. I don't want any attention on me, right? So the reason why I say that is because whenever I drive anywhere, like our car is unique, but it's not a luxury car. Like we don't we don't drive a Jag. We don't drive a Mercedes or a BMW or a Range. You know what I mean? Like. We drive a regular, regular car like a Toyota. You know what I mean? I mean, I see them on the road, but it's not as common as like a, a Volkswagen Golf. I'll say that. I already kind of stand out because of that. It's just kind of like, okay, I have to stand out because of this. That already makes me kind of nervous because I feel like I stick out like a Thor sum. Thor, a sort, a Thor sum? <gasps> a sore thumb. I'm driving through. I have no problems driving through a city, even with all the people weaving in and out. Cool, whatever. And the first thing that, that happens to kind of make my anxiety go like up a little bit. Okay. I'm driving and I'm in a lane that's next to a lane that I'm supposed to. So of course, like any normal human adult is going to do, that's driving. You're going to look at that side, look in your mirrors, look out your window, see if there's anybody there in the lane so that you can move on over to that side. I see that there's a car in front of me in that lane and then I see that there's a car behind me, but it's like a car and a half length between them and the car that's in front of them. Put on my signal, put on my indicator, whatever you want to call it, and I start to skedaddle into the lane. Now, I can see that the person... It's kind of like speeding up a little bit from what I could see. And if this person ever saw my video and remembers that moment, I did not mean to cut you off if you thought that I was trying to cut you off. From what I saw, I had more than enough space to get over in the lane safely, not hit anybody, not obstruct anybody or whatever. But I can understand, you know, to some people for the perception can be different, you know, and it's perfectly fine. But another thing about me, guys, other than me just wanting to fade away, kind of like that, that gif with Homer fading away into the bushes, do not engage in road rage. Number one, because it's a waste of time. And number two, I'm just not that angry of a person. I do not feel the need to flip anybody off. I don't feel the need to cuss and be my horn to cut you off and to do that whole like chicken thing. I have things that I need to do, places I need to go, people I need to see. The last thing I want to do is get into some road rage war on the road with another person. So this person beeps their horn and like lays on their horn and I'm thinking to myself, I didn't cut you off though. Like there was more than enough space for me to get in here. I don't understand why you're beeping your horn. So I get in the lane, I'm still driving, you know, just like ignoring because I'm just like, I'm not going to engage in road rage. This is not who I am. I, I'd have never been like that. I don't beat my horn, I don't do any of that stuff. Cause I'm just like, why do I need to do that? I'm just waiting, you know, for people to cross the street so I can turn. So then the person comes up from behind me, gets on the side of me and is laying on their horn. They can see that I'm not paying attention because again, I'm not gonna engage. I inconvenienced you for like a second. I just moved into the lane. And I guess now you're laying on your horn because you want me to know that you're upset about it. But it's like, I can hear you. I still don't feel like that's a reason for me to engage with you, but okay, whatever. So they stop, they stop <laughs> next to me laying on their horn and I don't look like I, I'm telling you when I when I tell you I have blinders on it's like I'm aware of what's going on around me more than more than enough I am extremely hyper aware when I'm by myself I'm just like I still don't feel like I need to engage with you the person stopped they're laying on their horn whatever I guess they realize like oh she's not gonna pay attention to me well I'm gonna make her pay attention to me so then they stop in front of me so this is me so then they stop in front of me and like beeped on their horn and just stop there so I'm sitting there and I'm just like is this person really just gonna stop in front of me I'm just gonna go around you and if I I can't get around you and like get in front of you or like to the side of you or whatever to like keep going down this street I'm just gonna go up the street and turn which is exactly what I did first thing right that's before I even get to SARS another thing that's causing a lot of anxiety is not being able to find parking drive around again I'm able to find parking right across the street from SARS I park I got on my forms I see that there's a long queue I'm like okay whatever I was semi prepared for this so I get in the queue one thing about us Americans slash foreigners, we, I can't speak for every American. I mean, truthfully speaking, I'm, I'm speaking for myself and maybe a select few. The one thing that we kind of can't stand is when people look at us with stars in their eyes, more so dollar signs in their eyes, because they think that because we're over here, whether we're visiting or we're living or in between like some sort of hybrid type situation that we're just made out of money. That's not the case, right? A lot of people had to sell a lot of their stuff in order to have some sort of life over here. Please don't look at us Americans like we're just these super rich people because most of us are not. So when you're in a situation like you're in an inner city in a country that you don't really know much the languages of, especially if people are not speaking English, it makes you really nervous. One of the things that I tend to not do 
much out in public is speak because as soon as people hear your accent and hear that you're clearly not South African, perception and their views and things start to change. You can almost see the wheels turning on the spot and they can be kind of terrifying. And the reason why I mention that is because when I got to the SARS building, as soon as I got into the queue, there was a gentleman and a woman that were kind of talking to each other in front of me. And the gentleman was scanning me like a damn barcode with a scanner type situation. I mean, scanning me from literally head to toe to, the, to my fingertips bit, practically, okay? He had immediately like clocked my ring, which I just have my wedding band on today. Um, I don't have my engagement ring on, but you guys have seen my engagement ring in videos and stuff like that. And for me, it's very modest. But this man, I could tell by his body language, even though he was not speaking like English, English, you can always tell by body language what people are talking about and what they're referring to. It's like he clocked my ring set and clocked my watch and was just like kind of talking to the lady and like pointing too, okay? That's another thing that happens quite a bit. Um, and then all of a sudden he just left. That immediately made me feel nervous because it's like, I'm a woman down in this inner city that I'm not familiar with, side of this building, queuing up with all these people that I don't know, and it's making me really uncomfortable. So as I'm standing in the queue, my anxiety guys was just going up and up and up and up. So it got to a point where the lady who was in front of me that was talking to that gentleman kept being really kind of weird with her behavior. Cause I, like I said, I'm, hyper aware of what's going on. And I try to keep calm as much as possible because I feel like if people can see that you're kind of uncomfortable, then they will see that as, ooh, she's a target. Like I can easily overtake her. So she kept being like this, like texting. It's like she would look at me and then text and then turn her phone and stuff. And I was just like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. So it got to a point where it was just not pure chaos, but it was a little bit chaotic because people were just trying to figure out like where the queue was, if there was more than one queue, like do they need a number or all this other stuff, right? And this woman in front of me kept making me really uncomfortable. I felt like everybody around me was gonna just take my stuff or try to assault me in some way. Cause I'm just like, I feel like that's gonna, ha that's gonna happen. So it got to a point where it was so debilitating that I had to leave. And I was like, I need to just get away from this place and get back to my safe space, which is wherever my husband is. <laughs> I got into the car and like just started breaking down because I was just like, I felt so uncomfortable. I got back to the house, broke down again. I was just like, I'm so sorry, babe. Like I kept thinking to myself, am I feeling this way because I'm by myself and you know, I'm doing all this stuff um, like without him because he was still feeling sick sick and i was like no it's because i have all of these different elements that make me feel really stressed out and anxious like i felt very very uncomfortable i'm gonna try this other location that's a little bit closer see if i can get everything sorted out at that office and i was able to so i won't need to go to sars and pretoria <laughs>